那我们先来讲，呃、uh, ，today we are going to talk about the digital electronic and microprocessor system ELEC 211 and lecture three. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about what are the control processing unit, what is ARM Cortex M O core, the instruction register, the instruction decoder, the control unit. The arithmetic logic unit, which is appreciated as the ALU, the bank register, the address register. Fetch, decode, and execute cycle, and then the processor core connections, which are the internal connection and external connections. And then we're going to describe the instruction set and program counter. So firstly, what is the central process unit? The central processing unit is or CPU. It's a part of the microprocessor system that does all the work, and it prints the instructions stored in the memory and performs the calculation. It controls the flows of data along with this bus, and it determines which memory address to use. Uh, for example, I see this is understandable, right? So it does all the work, all the calculation. So it's in the CPU, right? And it interprets the instruction stored in the memory. Just that uh, um, instruction stored in the memory. The instruction stored. Would you, uh, uh, the instruction is stored in the. The instruction stored in the, in the uh, CP, CPU. We have the decoder. Actually, uh, why the memory? Uh, is it like a program, right? The instruction is from the data bus. So this one is not the where are the instruction from, where are the instruction from, where. And it performs the calculation, it controls the flow of data along with the data bus. That's understandable, it's like control and perform the calculation, ALU does that. And it determines which memory address to use, which means that they have the memory, uh, memory address, right? Memory address. So inside the CPU, the CPU is designed to perform all these functions as efficiently as, efficient as possible, and they can be subdivided into a number of blocks which have distinct functions. Each CPU are different, and we focus on the ARM Cortex M0 core, the CPU for the Cortex M0 range of many processors. So for example, the ARM Cortex M0 core, the basic building block of ARM Cortex M0 are the address register, the control union, the register bank, 16 times 32 bits, and the, the instruction decoder, the arithmetic logic union, ALU, the instruction register. The instruction register we have, we, let's look at the instruction register, which means that it's the place where, where the register, where the instruction are stored. Okay, this is where the instruction are stored. And the, the instruction stored in your memory travel along the data bus to the ALU where they are lo uh, loaded into the instruction register. So that, that is very intuitive that uh, originally the instruction are stored in memory and uh, <coughs> are going to travel it to the data bus and uh, to, to get it, uh, where to store it in the CPU? We store it in the instruction register. Okay. And the instructions are mostly 16 bits long, but sometimes uh, 32 bits long. They are stored in your instruction register, not part of the main memory. That's understandable. It's just uh, how do we. Uh, and uh, it's not part of the main memory. And the process of loading the instruction register is known as fetch, which means that we are going to get the instruction from the main memory to the instruction register. And then we are going to talk about the instruction decoder and the control unit. Uh, they are kind of, the, kind of the instruction decoder, what does that mean? The instruction decoder will have a dictionary within it. So as long as you have the diction, as long as you have a diction as an instruction, say, uh, go left. And then the decoder will refer to the dictionary. So what is left mean? Go left, OK. Which means that uh, for a computer to understand, it turn, turn left, OK. 
So which means that maybe the, the computer uh, on the left, the, the screen, <laughs> the screen maybe maybe has a rotator. It have uh, maybe the on the left is going counterclockwise, and the right will go clockwise. Yeah, that is how the instruction in decoder made. It decode the instruction, which is very simple and short word into a a way which the computer can understand. And the control unit is also in charge of the control path, so which means that the I mean the control unit is in control of the control bar, so it's very obvious. And the process of interpreting each instruction is known as decode, which means that for, to know, to decode means jiemma, which means to, to know what are the, what are the, uh, what does the instruction mean to the computer, okay? And then we come to the arithmetic and logic unit, which is really as ALU, it's, where the calculation takes place, just like the matrix multiplication, integration, something like that, times, and so forth, okay? And for example, there are some logic, uh, there, uh, there are some logical uh, functions, something like and, or, x, or, we have also have some arithmetic, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication. The process of performing each Instruction is known as execution cycle. So the thing is that the execution cycle is within the arithmetic and logic unit. Right. Let's talk about the register bank. So what is register bank? Register bank is uh, 16 times 32 bits. Mm. 16 times 32 bits. What does that mean? That since the ARM is a 32 bits uh, microprocessor, 16, they are going to have 16 locations, and each location is going to have 32 bits long, okay? And uh, the register bank is a local memory for the CPU, which is understandable, which means that it's the memory within the CPU, okay? And it has 16 locations, and the dresser has the name of R0 to R15, okay? They are used to hold the data, which is processed by the ALU, and also hold the result for any calculation. Just like a placeholder, you can even think of that. And the R13, 14, and 15 have special function, which they will cover later. As shown in this diagram, the register bank, we have the general purpose register from R0 to R14. The R15 is called the program counter, okay? General, there we have 15 general, and uh, one program counter. The R15, R13 to 15, we have a special function. So, and uh, finally, CPSR, which is called Current Program Status Point, which is uh, additional, which we'll cover later. So, address register. Uh, the address register is a 32 bits memory device that holds the memory, holds the memory address value, holds the memory address value, okay? Either this address can be uh, the memory location of the next, either this may be for the memory location of the next execution of the next e instruction during the fetch loop. And during the, du uh, during the execution level, why don't we put the register in the register bank? Or during the execution cycle, the address is for memory location as a containing data to be loaded into a register. So, the address register is uh, is also is address uh, 
a register outside the register bank, and it has stored the address to 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 get the next to get from the uh, main memory, which is used for the next fetch level, or it is going to during the execution level the address is, is for a memory as a containing data to be loaded into the register where the data from to be stored. It's just that if you need some <coughs> if you need some if you need some uh, data from the main memory, it can store it. So in general, the uh, generally it's uh, to get the instruction from the main memory, the address, and it can get some data from memory. Yeah. Everything that is in the memory is going to be held by the address register, okay? And uh, which means that uh, either the address may be the memory location for the next instruction during that, or in the execution cycle, the address for memory is either containing data to be loaded into where the data or where data from a register to be loaded. Or during the execute level cycle, the address is for a memory location, either containing data to be loaded into a register, or where data from a register to be loaded. From a register to be loaded. This is not very clear. Um, I will clarify that with And then it's the fetch, decode, and the execute. So the CPU, CPU performs three cycles sequentially during the fetch level and instruction in memory is loaded into the instruction register. During the decode cycle, the instruction is interpreted by the execution, uh, by the instruction decoder during the execute cycle. Either the ALU performs the, uh, performs the calculation on the value held in the register, or the value in the register stored in the memory or a memory is loaded into a register. Yeah, this, this is uh, basically a memory is loaded to a register first, and then a value in the register loaded uh, and in, into the register, and the ALU performs the calculation, and, uh, and then a value from the register is loaded into the main memory. I'm not sure whether it's that secret. I will clarify later. So fetch, decode, and execute is the main cycle here. So let's do some corrections. So how many bits do we need to address a general purpose register in the register bank? So what is a general purpose register? How many general purpose registers do we have? Let's go back. General purpose register, we have 15, right? Because this one is called program counter. This one is called program counter. This one no, we have 15 general purpose register. Okay. Since we have 15 general purpose register, 15, no, we have 15. Let's look at that, 15. And uh, how many bits do we have? Uh, each one, we have 32, right? 32 bits. So since it's uh, 32 bits, uh, so 15 times uh, 15 times 32 uh, is uh, 380. So the, the answer is B. Now let's continue to look at the, the, the instruction register is connected to the instruction decoder, uh, which means that, uh, look at that. The, the, the logic here is that you have the instruction register. And then we are going to interpret that. That's very obvious. 
And then the instruction decoder. We have known, the computer has known how to do that. We are going to use the control unit to, to tell the control unit, control the computer to do that, okay? And the control unit is going to tell the address register, the address bank, and the arithmetic and the logic unit to do the performance corresponding way. And there are some internal ex connections. For example, the uh, ALU can connect to the address register, and the register bank can connect to the register. And the ALU and the register bank can connect to each other. So, what does that mean? So firstly, the ALU can connect to the address register, which means that the ALU may directly use, acquire something from the main memory. Mm, for example, he needs some, some value. He, he is going to do the calculation, he needs a value. Therefore, we, th this line is served for the specific function. Okay. And the ALU directly, uh, the ALU and the register bank communicate to each other. Okay, these two communicate to each other. What does that mean? Which means that the ALU is going to load this information, acquire the information from the register bank, and the information calculated from the ALU can be loaded back to the register bank. So that's where we can acquire and calculate and reload that. And the interpretation from the register bank may require the register, address register. That's very obvious. That um, we the information from we after we calculated, we can we can uh, put it in. Yes, we have put we can put we can put we can put the we can put the, can put the uh, calculated things in, and. Uh, then we can put it in the, load it into the main memory. That's, that's, that's the key thing. So, why can't the, and the, this is maybe just the uh, design internal connection, which, which the address register cannot directly override the, override the register bank. That's very interesting. And, uh, so in general, there are two kind of connections, which is uh, generally the internal connection is, is defined as follows. Which is the, the instruction register, instruction decoder, the instruction at the control unit. And then the CPU is going to control the ALU, the instruction band, the address register. For the ALU, it's going to control the we're going to load something from the memory through the regist address register, and the register bank and the ALU can communicate in both ways. The register bank can only be loaded from the ALU, and the, the uh, can only acquire, can only the, can only be written by the ALU, and the register bank can return to the address register, and the ALU may written to the address register. So that's basically the same. I think that that means that the ALU may want something or may, may write something. This is not very obvious, I know we figured it out. The ALU and the register bank are now connected to each other and uh, the memory register. So let's look at the external connections. The data bus, as I mentioned, is going to connect the register bank, which is very obvious. Maybe we can see the register to be one and the instruction register, which means that we are going to write some data to the instruction. And the control bus is connected to control union, this is very obvious. And the address bus is directly linked to the address register, that's also very obvious. And let's look at the program counter. The program counter is a local register to CPU. The instructions are stored in memory 2. So which memory address for the next execution? The Register R15 always holds a memory address for the next execution to be executed. 
An alternative name for register R5 is the program counter. So that is the same. I mean the address register. Which memory address? For? I think it should be installed in the memory register. Because you see it's a memory register here. <coughs> Look at the memory register. The memory register as a whole, the memory address oh, value. Yeah. As a huh? Was I was I Jiang Ku? As a the address is a thirty two bit device, which it hold. Uh, value as the device may be the memory location for the next hand. That means the the address may be used for the memory location for the next instruction set, right? The the address register stores the address for the next execution site. However, you mentioned that. However, you mentioned that here the program counter, the program counter, when an ex <coughs> instruction is executing a program counter, R15 increments by 2. Instruction, many locations. Are stored uh, instruction program counter. It's a local region. It's a local register to the CL CPU. Instructions are stored in memory. So, what is the memory address for the next instruction? After you always hold the memory address for the next instruction to be executed. And uh, an alternative name is to the program counter. So, I mean both both. Ah, the program counter, okay. which is also called what? Which is also called the register, right? The the uh, how to say the name address counter. That's that's very interesting. And the R fifteen always holds the memory address. Next execution, so maybe same. An uh, alternative name for the is called program counter. So I'm going to figure out the difference between the program counter and the address register. So the instruction stored in the memory. The instruction as a 16 bits or uh, 32 bits long, right? And the memory address only has 8 bits long. Memory location have 8 bits long. So one instruction may have two other two or memory location are eight bits long, so one instruction of byte as a as a two or three bits in the one sixteen bits instruction maybe so in two and uh, why the memory location are in are in eight bits long? Why? I think it's in thirty two bits long. So it's thirty two bits metal processor, and not uh, since. Uh, 32 bits microprocessor. Mm. The following 32 bits instruction to be stored is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 8, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 8, 0, 0, 0, 3. So let's look at this. This, this section is very easy to solve. So for example, the next 32, the next 16 bits is going to be, it's going to be 4 and 5, right? That's very interesting, easy to be so. And the, what is the next 32 bits instruction to be stored? It's just the, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's very interesting. And uh, well, the instruction stored in the memory is that we, ha we can store them in uh, aligned form and uh, unaligned form in which the 
in which the aligned form means the starting point is directly in the, is in the, you know are directly stored in a start at the you know the eight bits memory location. A start has the start as eight bits. And the unaligned form, which means that it does not start as the start of the beats. And uh, then let's look at the then let's look at the uh, how to say let's look at it. we are uh, for the 30, 32 bits it's all, all the same and. Uh, in the ARM process, uh, we always con consider the aligned instruction. And uh, in general, in general, the instruction is st st stored in a consecutive location of memory, so that they are excluded in the same order they appear in the memory. Assuming uh, the instruction is 16 bits long, if the instruction being excluded and stored is, uh, um, is uh, OO, and then the next one is O2, Next one is O4, another one is O6, and first. Especially when you have someone called a branching instructor, a branching one is going to change from, uh, for example, like you have a branching instruction, instruction 4. And what is that like if? If this branch factor is true, then it is going to go to a instruction 9. Which is not what we want. We, we want it to be executed. Uh, I mean, this is based on your design. Or based, uh, on our original thinking that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, just the uh, sequential order for the instruction. But with the branching factor, we can uh, change the order. Or we can, we can even change back. Maybe go back to 1. Yeah? And they're going to do a loop again. So that's, really, uh, that's also interesting. So when an instruction is executing the program counter after it's been implemented by two, so that it holds the memory address to the next, is that when a branch factor is executed when the program computer program branched to another part of the memory and the program counter holds a completely new memory address. In therefore, in this uh, course, we have talked about the uh, control unit, process control unit, the ARM Cortex M0, the fetch, the decode, and the, the execute cycle, the process uh, call connections, the instruction set, and program counter. So the next class will go into uh, the next month, 4 p.m. That's uh, okay. See you next week.